I'm think? not a fan of fasted cardio. If, you know, if, it's a, if it's a bodybuilder that's doing low steady state, that I'm okay with it. But most people out there, they're fasting and their performance is dropping. And it depends what type of cardio totally are we true. doing. Are we are we doing cardio for just fat burning? Or are we doing cardio for performance? They're two different things. Like I go in for a VO2 test and it's telling me that my optimal fat burning range is at 127 beats a minute. That doesn't mean I'm going to live at 127 beats a minute all the time. Like right. I got to get into the 160s. Like yeah. I, I have to train in different zones. Like I have to do that if I want to be a well-rounded athlete. But I also have to understand that you can't keep throwing stress on stress on stress. You keep throwing all these great things, all these great exercises, all these great modalities into a pot. Like they're great exercises at a certain point, like we're doing too much. And that's what I find is a big problem with some of the type A's. Well, well hold on, I want to be doing this and that. I'm like, dude, you got to slow down. It's too much. Your body's going to just, it's going to tap out at a certain point. This is a very exciting podcast for me anyway, number one. I'm excited. I'm very excited. We have Don Saladino and uh, he's a, he trains superheroes, legit. I mean, if you go onto a social media page, that's what his like caption tagline is. I train superheroes, yeah. And a few other things, but. yeah. I'm but trying you to do. Think, oh, when did I put that up? That's been a while. Yeah, no, I, 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 I did put that up and I, I do train superheroes. I've been training them for a long time. I've been training for 25 years professionally. And then how did you, okay, so let's go into the superhero thing. Cause I, I'm fast. I'm like obsessed. How with, did I get into it? Well, yes, I'm obsessed with Wonder Woman, number one. So right. when I saw that as you're you like. see that with the necklace you're wearing. Right? Yeah. And so when <laughs> on your social media, on your Instagram, when it says I train superheroes, yep. I was like. I'm in. I want this guy on yeah. my podcast right now. Thank you. Of course. And then who who knew what a fantastic person and guy you are? Thank you. I mean, by the way, everybody, and I'm not just saying this because he's sitting in front of me, literally every single person, when his name comes up with other people in the fitness space, you cannot say, you cannot hear a bad word about you. Oh, you're me most Thank most you. well-liked fitness human on the planet, probably. Thank you. That's, that's, that's probably the nicest thing anyone said to me because I don't, I honestly, like I, I take this seriously. Like I've been doing this for 25 years professionally. I, I love this profession. I love this industry. This has given me so much, like at a young age where I struggled with things, the fitness in the second grade gave me my identity. It gave me confidence. It gave me a sense of myself and I, I made that my career. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been an unbelievable 25 years so far. A lot of highs and a lot of lows. But uh, the superhero thing was something I never expected. Hugh Jackman gave me that opportunity, by the way. Was Hugh Jackman your first, he was, Wolverine? He was, he was my first. Yeah, he was <laughs> your first? Was, uh, he was my first. Yeah, no, he was... Um, it, he was training with a buddy of mine. The guy's name is Rico Wesley, great trainer. And um, Rico ended up... His wife got pregnant with triplets and they ended up moving and they came and they passed. Hugh saw me working out in the gym and was like, would you work with me? At first, I didn't know what was going on. Like how many years ago? I wonder every detail. It was probably 15 years ago. Okay. Amelia's 15, actually, it was probably 16 years ago. Because um, Hugh came to me and was like, would you work with me? And I was kind of like, you're working with Rico. And he was like, no, no, you don't understand. I'm like, I'm not talking to you if you're working with my friend. And I kind of almost. You did that. Yeah. See? Uh, I wouldn't do it. What integrity but, you thank have. Thank you. Thank you. But then Rico came to me. He's like, no, you don't understand. Donnie, this is what's going on. I'm moving. Rico was a great coach. So I started working with Hugh and we worked together for almost a year. And um, he was he was incredible. And it was, it was interesting because it was at a time where there was no social media. There was no marketing. He was trying to do some marketing on the side. I'm like, don't like make this about your session. I don't want any notoriety here. I just wasn't thinking about it from that standpoint. I was so concerned with his privacy that I just didn't want him to think I was in this for anything but getting him better. Get so out. So I wouldn't even do that. So we did like one picture that I ended up posting like later on. I don't even know. And then he did one thing for me on, on the ta in the tabloids, but then that opened the doors for me for like, you know, next thing you know, Calvin Klein's coming and Ryan's coming. And then I, I've trained over... I mean, honestly, probably over 200 different celebrities in my life. We're going to get to Ryan because it's Ryan Reynolds, who is my, That's my, my, boy. my main He's crush of all time, but He's I'm sure like, like every other girl. Every, everyone says that. Yeah. Every, I think every guy would say that too. Yeah, like what's not to like? Yeah. He's, I mean, that Deadpool put him over the edge. I swear with the, the humor and the, that face and that body. I mean, it's unbelievable. He should, but he's got, you know what? He's got, he'll be the first to admit it. I think things in his career, like really, he was always successful, but I think yeah. it really took off when he met his wife, Blake, and she 
just brought such an element to the table for him. Um, they make their their team. Uh, and that's what I think a lot of people don't realize. They see him yeah. in the movies, but they don't understand how she's behind closed doors. Yeah, and tell me. The, the, I the thing know. she does from a marketing standpoint, I mean, I think she's brilliant. Like, I think she's given me incredible ideas. She's gotten on calls with me and she's like, think about it this way. And she's just, she's incredible. She, they've become family to me. So um, I, again, everything I have in my career, a big portion of it is because of them. I'll be the first to admit it. That's so nice. Yeah. Well, wow, okay, so let's go back. So then did you then officially get Hugh Jackman ready for Wolverine. I Is did. It, that body was because of you. No, that body was because of him. But like it was, uh, I always say they're, they're the ones doing the work. Like I'm giving them the tools and God, it was a while ago. So yeah, that Wolverine, when the movie Australia, he shot with Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Ironically, I trained him for Wolverine, but then they threw Australia out at him and then he left. He asked me to come with him. We were having our daughter, Amelia. She, uh, she's, 15 now, she was born August 11th. So I remember it was the, it was the exact time we were having a meal. Like, I can't go with you to Australia, you're crazy. But he ended up going and um, he shot Australia. And I think whatever that took, three, four months, and then they shot Wolverine. So I know he had another coach that he's really good friends with in Australia. So I think he hired me to get him ready for Wolverine, but he shot Australia. And then while shooting it, he was preparing for Wolverine, which he shot three, four months later. Were they, was the other coach using the same techniques no. and tools? No, we didn't even really communicate. I, I think, you know, it, and it's interesting there. Like I've got friends of mine that we pass people off to. And that was, it was nothing, yeah. nothing against that coach, but like using Ben Bruno, for example, one yeah. of my really good friends who lives out here. Like we've passed each other people, zero ego on both ends. Ben, what are you working on with the person? What's worked for them? Which hasn't worked? Don, do your, do your thing. You know what you're doing. Ben, do your thing. You know what you're doing. There's always that communication. Um, and I always like that. I think that's yeah. a little bit more of that white glove service that you're able to, to Absolutely. you know, hand off. And I think you also let the client realize that, you know, there's, there's no ego here and we're doing whatever we have to do to get you into the best place possible. So I love that communication piece, but it doesn't always work that way. And it's, I think that's fine. But most of, but now in my career, like if someone's going off, like I'm at the point now where like, I always talk to them and I just like that handoff process. Yeah. But back then, 15 years ago, you know, you're, people I, are competitive <laughs> though. I know a couple of people, I'm not going to say their names, um, who I, who are super, Covet, they're very competitive. They will not share. They want to always have the leg up. I don't, I don't love that. I think it's a very, it's what goes around does come around. I don't I collab with people like that. Like if I mean, you, either it, I don't collab, I stay away from those yeah, people. Yeah. I'm just, I'm into like, there's a bunch of friends that I'm doing some speaking with. I'm going out to Luca Hosever's event, um, um, spot in Seattle and we're all sharing email lists and we're all like, what are we trying to do? We're, we're just trying to put together a great event and we're trying to work together. Absolutely. It's just a really fun. So I believe in collaborating with people who are good people that I know and that are good at what they do. Now, when I get calls from people, I don't know. And they're like, can you collaborate? Like, I, I, I don't know who you are. It's like, it's like saying, well, can I come over to your house? It's very, I think it's almost <laughs> like a little bit of like an intrusive, like, well, I don't know you. We don't have a relationship, but Absolutely. things evolve. Like you and I, like, I feel like I've known you for a while. We, you know, we met pretty recently and, um, you know, <laughs> very, it's very recently, very, very recently. But, but I do feel like I've known you forever. You, know, you, you, you get, know. you get it, you, right? You, like, you know. I agree. And I think there's a big difference and we're going to get into this after, after we talk about the superhero part, but, uh, being a, a, a true strength and conditioning coach, a fitness mm -hmm. coach, and like a social media fitness influencer, mm -hmm. there is a big, big difference between the two. Yeah. And I think uh, the knowledge and education that, you know, you bring to the table is so vast. And I think a lot of times people get very, they don't know what they don't know, right? So especially in today's culture and time, people go on Instagram and they're seeing people who have 10 million followers because they look good aesthetically, but they know nothing and we don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. Right. So I want to get into that. I think yeah. it's super interesting. I, I mean, I think we, listen, we know what we know in life, right? Yeah. Like there's things that you're That's exceptional right. at and there's things that I'm like I have an accountant. At. Like there's like, <laughs> there's certain people that I hire that I'm like, I just, this is not my wheelhouse. Absolutely. And um, I don't, I mean, I don't blame the consumer because what do they know? Like they they see an attractive guy or an attractive woman right. who looks a certain way, who's putting up content that looks fun. Um, but they're just putting up what works for them. So there's a difference between a coach and there's a difference between a fitness influencer. Yeah. I think a coach, you got to get your hands dirty. Like I was like something I'm proud of is yeah, I've trained over 40,000 one hour sessions. Like that's 25 years of me training. And, and for years where it was 50, 60 sessions a week, 
to help keep my lights on. Yeah, like to I, grind, con edge, to grind. I, I had Con Ed shut my power down. Like I had Amex shut my my cards down. I almost missed 37 consecutive payrolls. Like doing it in New York, like my my overhead a year was two million bucks just to keep the lights on. Like you go through some tough things when Lehman Brothers craps out, when Bear Stearns goes under, when Goldman is is literally sinking and half your half your business is corporate events because I have a golf space upstairs. Like you got to reinvent yourself and it's tough. Like, so I, I, you know, I had to go through wow. hell, but it's still some of the best moments of my life. I mean, the most creative I've ever got in business. I mean, I, I got a PhD in business from being in that place. It's given me a lot of stuff. Absolutely. But um, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't change. I would maybe change a couple of things, but you know, not, not, not everything. Some of the pain I had to go through. I love what you said. Cause I, I say this a lot that the life, skills that you get from fitness take when you from a young age yeah. is a microcosm for life in general like you learn so much like you said like the confidence that you got the the goal setting discipline all these things like how like you have to be resilient you know what i mean like there's so many things that that set you up for success right and if when you take fitness Seriously, like you were talking yep. about. Okay, let's go back to the superhero stuff. Okay, I want to know because I want to know exactly what you do with them. So, um, who else did you train for a role? So we got Wolverine oh down. Oh man, um, so we got we all know you Ryan know, Reynolds like for Lee, Lee F. Schreiber, uh, Ray Donovan. Oh yeah, of course. You have to tell me. I know. Yeah. I like him too. So um, God, you got all my favorites. Are you yeah. serious? I, I worked with Sebastian Stan, one of my favorites. Which one is he? Uh, he's uh, the Winter Soldier, the one with the, the metal arm and the long hair. Oh, you do Winter Bucky, Soldier. Bucky, you know. That Bucky, yes, yes, so yes. So him, um, David Harbour for Hellboy, you know, Stranger Things yeah. now. He's in Stranger Things. Um, Zach Levi for, oh God, uh, Shazam. Yeah. <sighs> Billy Crudup was in Watchmen. Um, Emily Blunt. Oh my God, you really did do a lot of them. Annie Hathaway. She was Spider, she was Spider Woman, right? Was she Spider Woman? I, I don't think know. of her as, I think of Black, I think of Scarlett Johansson. I worked with her for Black Widow. For Black Widow. I did. So Black Widow you did, Wolverine you did, Green Lantern you did. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know what? Um, I, I can't, off the top of my head, I would have to go to a list. There's that's a, a, there's lot. a lot. There's a lot I'm leaving out, but yeah. That's a bunch. Okay, so tell me what the, okay. Let's talk about like the regimen. So yep. do you believe it's the like 80 or 90, 80, 20 rule? You have to, it's all nutrition. 80% 80 is what you eat and 20% is your workout. I think what it depends your, on who you're working with and what are they training for, right? Like if it's, yeah, I mean, if they're coming in and they're fit. Oh, John Krasinski, he was another one. You know John Krasinski? Yes, I know him too. Yeah. Yes. Um, so he was Jack really Ryan. He's Jack Ryan, though. That's pretty He's bad. Jack Ryan. It's pretty super, cool. It's pretty badass. It's pretty, listen, He's those badass. are big, big names. Yeah, badass. But, but like, but to me, the fact that like Wolverine is the the Mecca, right? Because when people he's, think he's of a body he's that it. to be trained for for a superhero, that's the body. He the one it. that you don't have, which I'm kind of not very happy about, is Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh God, who did she work with? I think Mag maybe Magnus. Magnus. I think the the, the guy Magnus. He's a uh, he's a uh, he's European. I think. Maybe he's really, I don't know. I don't know, but I know he's, I don't think he's from the States. I'm not sure, but I, I know she works with a good coach. Um, well, let's get back to what you do. So when you, cause yeah. someone walks in the door, yeah. what do you say? Okay, so cause let's, let's say that most people are like somewhat fit already. Right. They're not yeah. like fit, but they, they look good. They look okay. They're like doing things right. What's right. your, which, what do you do then? I think the first thing I want to get an understanding of is what are we trying to create? right? Like you're coming in, you, there's a role, there's a character in mind in your eyes. What, what does that person look like? And sometimes we'll go to the computer and we'll pull it up. So it'll be like, um, I remember when I worked with Lieb for Chuck Webner, the Chuck Webner role, which is the Rocky role. Um, Chuck is the original Rocky. Lieb sat me down. He's like, I got to look like this Russian shop putter. And he pulled that, uh, uh, this picture up of this Russian shot putter. And the guy almost looked a little bit softer than Liev. So it wasn't like where everyone's coming in and it's like, oh, well, Brad Pitt Fight Club or Ryan Reynolds in one of his movies. It's not always like that. We have to sometimes create a physique that looks maybe even a little bit softer or worse. Yeah, or, let's not talk about those. Let's yeah. talk about, but it's, you know, I, it's I, want, I, want Ryan, I want to know Ryan Reynolds regime or Hugh Jackman. Yeah, regime. so so what we would do is we would we would come in and I, I think understanding what the body needs to look like and then we put them through a screening. So running them through a functional movement screening, which is um, 
it's a very basic seven step screening process that a trainer can take any client through. And if we see red flags and I have my team of physical therapists. So if I see something that I don't like from a movement standpoint, like movement patterns, then I, like yeah, movement patterns. Movement patterns. I never liked to load dysfunction. Like if there's something wrong with the way that they move, we'll start practicing that in their warm up. So I always, I call it practice. So if someone is lacking an external rotation in the shoulders or thoracic extension or rotation, whatever it is, any fancy terminology you want to throw out there, um, I will take those imbalances and that becomes part of their warm up. And then we start working on corrective exercises in their warm up rather than getting on a treadmill for five, 10 minutes or a bike five for 10 minutes and warming up. So it's a targeted warm up that's very purposeful. Yeah. So then after the warm up, then it depends on what are we trying to create and what is that training going to look like? I've written, I, I think I've written maybe, I've written thousands of programs in my, in my life. So, you know, it's, it's understanding, well, how many days a week do you, do you have to commit to this? Dude, I only have four days, no more than four days. It ain't happening. Well, okay. I got to create this in four days. He was a different story. He was like six days a week. Should I do double sessions? I'm like, I don't know. That's I don't what I was going to ask. Are they all, like for Ryan Reynolds or are they doing, or for Wolverine, are they doing doubles every Ryan, day? Ryan, Ryan won't do doubles. I, I don't want Ryan doing doubles because Ryan's, Ryan's an animal. He's, he's got, he's got an incredible frame. He's got a narrow waist. He's got great shoulders. Um, I know. He's just got a great, he's got a great abdominal wall and, um, I, he, you know, he's, <laughs> it, once he starts dialing up his diet and his training, his body responds really well to it. He's the easiest guy to work with. It really he makes okay, me look so good. I, it's, um, okay, honestly, like I, everything you're saying, that's why he's like the biggest sex symbol of all time. He's just, he's just awesome. Okay. Well, and so Wolverine, you did, tw you did doubles a day? He was doing doubles, but it was really more... You know, when it was time to cut, we were doubling them up and maybe some cardio in the evening, some not even not even intervals because it was just too intense. Like we had a so many years ago, I mean, it was more lower steady state just to allow them to recover a little bit more. Um, but yeah, changes for every individual. So then, okay, when, because really, I, okay, so you said with the nutrition versus exercise, it, it, do you think it is that dominant on the nutrition side? Or you think Nutrition's it's very important, but I know, I know some genetic freaks that, can eat what they want and they just have this perfect physique. And I see that happen, but I think it's really understanding macronutrients and the power of calories mm -hmm. where I've changed body composition and gotten people leaner from not putting them in a deficit. And that's always what I strive to do. I do not want to put an actor who's preparing for a role into a deficit unless they've earned it. Right. Like I like yeah. it, and earning it means like, have you been living at your maintenance calories? You know, how's your digestion? How's your sleep? Like how much weight do we have to lose? What do we have to do with our body composition? I've changed body composition by just getting people to maintenance calories and cleaning up their nutrition and then their body becomes this energetic fat burning furnace. So let's talk about a couple of things. Yeah. So what, it, what, so then do you believe that you don't believe this whole thing about like, oh, we all have genetics and we all have a baseline that we can manipulate. I think we a all have, bit. we all do have genetics. We all do have a baseline, but I think that's not sleeping on hard work. Like I've, like I've, I mean, even talk, you look amazing. Thank you. But like even talking about myself, like I yeah. don't know too many people who work harder than me in the weight room and doing do, what I do. What do you do? What's your routine? I, I mean, it depends on the time of year, but I mean, I'm, I'm training five, six days a week. I mean, I, I probably do a little too much because I play hockey three days a week and I, I run one day a week and then I get all my lifting in. I love a power building approach, but I work a lot on mobility. So you how know, much, do you work out like how many hours a day? A couple. Two hours a day. Yeah, probably. Do you take a rest day? Yeah. I, I have to. Uh, normally Sundays, I like shutting down. You do? Just because I'm with the family and it makes sense. I, I like training during the week because I'm on and I'm working. And like Sunday is kind of the day where I try and disconnect a little bit. Is it hard for you not to work out? Because some yeah. of them, yeah. Yeah. Like it's because for me, I have to work out every day because then it's like it's a, my my frenetic energy has nowhere to go. Yeah, it, it is hard. I mean, Sundays are are, are kind of easy because I'm training myself, or maybe it's a Saturday if the day flops. Yeah. But um, when I when I'm going seven days a week, I do notice performance starts dropping yeah. and quality starts dropping. And um, time off is important for someone like you or someone like me who's really. It's easy for us to get in there and do it. It's part of who we are. But most people out there aren't like that. And those people, I try and get coming in with this minimalistic approach. We've seen some incredible progress by taking a minimalistic approach with people. Right, I think because, like to your point, not everyone's fanatical, right? So it's about what can you do? Because I, what I find also um, 
people do what they like to do, not yeah. necessarily like so, right, right. So if you people always say, what's the best thing to do? The thing that you're actually going to do, right? Oh, hundred percent. I, I mean, I have a I have a friend of mine who helps me. Like, I'll turn to my buddy, the muscle doc, Jordan Shallow. Yeah. I'll, I'll turn to him a couple times a year. And I'll be like, write me a program. I, I can't. I'm too. I'm too close to this right now. Yeah. He's like, I got you. And he'll put some stuff together to me, and I'll be like, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. It gets you out of your comfort zone. When I when I write so many programs that like even for myself, I'm too connected to my own emotions right. and myself. So I like getting people to put things together that I trust and that that'll challenge me. Not just from a, a like a strength standpoint or a cardio standpoint, but how about the way that we move? Right. right? The, the, really the movement important. patterns yeah, movement again. Patterns, so important. So important. People don't talk about that. Nope. You know, you said something also that was interesting because n- normally uh, coaches like you are not proposed, like they're not people who like cardio. They don't believe in cardio. They think cardio would burn muscle mass. It can. Right? It can. But you're doing cardio. You're running. I, but you're I doing enjoy it, but I enjoy it. Right. So for me, like I, I in the wintertime, I belong to this great hockey club three minutes from my house and I have a group of guys that we play. It's like a league. Three, and so three times a week you play? Oh yeah, I play Tuesday mornings at 6.30. I play Friday mornings at 7 a.m. and I play Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. It's awesome. It's so much fun. And then uh, Mondays, I've been doing like some tempo work on the on the uh, motorless treadmill that my buddy Derek Hansen, who's a, like a world renowned running mechanics coach, put together for me. That's and hard to do that one. Yeah, but it's more like it's quick burst, so it's not like so taxing. I mean, we're doing like ten seconds, eight seconds, six seconds. Oh wow! Doing some tempo runs It's more about the elasticity and getting the body to fire, and that makes me feel good. If I was going out and I was doing like long runs, I think that's so. You it, don't do that. I do, but not during hockey season. So do you not think that those long runs, like what's your opinion? Like as you age, right? Like yeah. for like 40 and over or 30, whatever, that that's not breaking down a lot of lead muscle mass. It can. And, and look at the bodies of a yeah. runner versus the bodies of someone who is resistant training. There's no arguing that. Right? There's no arguing that. But I also understand that people enjoy what they enjoy. Do what they do, right? like what they like, like to do. So if you want to go out for a three mile run once or twice a week, like do the resistance training, like make sure your protein's high enough to where you're not going to have that muscle breakdown, start paying more attention to nutrition, you know, avoid this fasted runs in the morning. Cause that'll, you know, p- potentially break down more muscle, get some amino acids in your body, like do things that are going to keep you. Okay. From breaking wait, you're down. saying a lot of stuff. Yeah. So fasted cardio, I was going to say to you, what do you, what do you I'm think? not a fan of fasted cardio. If, if it's a bodybuilder that's doing low steady state that I'm okay with it. But most people out there, they're fasting and their performance is dropping. So I never want to have any, and it depends what type of cardio totally are we doing? Sure. Are we, are we doing cardio for just fat burning? Or are we doing cardio for performance? They're two different things. Like I go in for a VO2 test and it's telling me that my optimal fat burning range is at 127 beats a minute. That doesn't mean I'm going to live at 127 beats a minute all the time. Like right. I got to get into the 160s. Like yeah. I, I have to train in different zones. Like I have to do that if I want to be a well-rounded athlete. But I also have to understand that you can't keep throwing stress on stress on stress. You keep throwing all these great things, all these great exercises, all these great modalities into a, into a, a, a pot. pot, like it doesn't like, you could take 20 of your favorite ingredients. If you throw it in and it might all at once just taste like shit. Yeah. Like it's not going to, you know, excuse me for, for saying, but like no, these are right. great ingredients. They're great exercises at a certain point. Like we're doing too much. And that's what I find is a big problem with some of the type A's. Well, well hold on. I want to be doing this and that. I'm like, dude, you got to slow down. It's too much. Your body's going to just, it's going to tap out at a certain point. So how do you know when that happens? Right. So like for someone who is a type A personality, right. I have a friend who is, uh, how do you, how do you, what do you say to them? How, what's the best, what's the best way to train I, that I, person? I think we got to, I think we got to assess how are they responding to the training stimulus? If you're turning around and you're doing what you're doing and you're waking up every day and you feel great and your energy level's high and you feel like you're getting stronger and you're in a good place, well, it ain't broken, right? What if you're tired though? If you're tired all the time, then I think we got to assess. But that's life, right? Life's tiring. It could be. It, it could, are you tired from the hour and a half that you're training? Are you tired from the fact that you're going to bed and sleeping only five hours? Or maybe your sleep quality's down or maybe right. your nutrition's not where it needs to be. Maybe you're not getting enough calories in. Like there's so many, I, I can't even give that advice because there's so many questions I'd have to ask. And also, like, I think not everything is very personal, right? So yeah. when people ask these questions, like, it's very hard to know with, without knowing the person, right? Yeah. Like some some body types, and I don't care what anybody says. I know if I don't do cardio, I a my my it my brain doesn't turn off as my my brain doesn't turn on. Like that's really what gets me really focused and alert and gives me more energy. Yeah. 
And I need my body type does better with cardio. Like I keep. I think I I love weight. cardio. I mean, I think I it's, can maintain weight better that yeah, way. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's fantastic. I just think that when you also do resistance training, I do right, but that's, but I don't love it like I love cardio. I don't, I don't get okay. the same high from it as it's, I do for as car, for cardio. Cardio gives that high. It really yeah. does. I mean, when you're out there and you're sweating, it's, yeah, there is a feeling off of that that we love. I mean, there's there's something to be said about that, and I don't. You know, I just, that's why I do it. Not because I love being on a treadmill that's for, why I do it. I do it because I need that. That's what gets my endorphins going. With, weight training doesn't do it. Even though I know intellectually, that's what really helps build lean muscle mass, especially as you age, right? Like, yep. uh, do I find it hard? I'm sure you get this question. I'd like to ask you actually sure. the most common questions that you get from people Yeah, because this is one question I think most people ask, and I'm, I'm curious. How do you build lean muscle mass as you age? Because it gets harder and harder. And then besides like this, don't give me the basic like, oh, resistant train, eat protein. Okay, well, let's say we're doing those no, two No, I think things. it's mindset. I think it's mindset. I think people start giving up. They start tapping out. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some incredible things by very seasoned people. Seasoned is my way of saying it as they're, okay, as they're as older than we nice are. Nice euphemism for right? old. <laughs> but like they're, they're very seasoned. And, um, seasoned. But, but no, it's like you're getting older. I'm like, okay, like my body comp, like I, I shot the cover of Muscle and Fitness last year. Like my body comps is good if not better. You than, did? Yeah, it was my second one for them. And I've done probably a dozen covers. I did Men's Health, I think three years ago. Like I've, I've been on a lot of, I've been on 12 covers at least. So... Oh my for God. me to be able to keep hitting that as I'm in my, I'm 45 now. Like, That's amazing. Oh, thanks. So it, you it, but, do look, I told you this, like, but you do look amazing. Thank you. But it, it's, there is, what has changed for, for me? Let me, let me, let me answer yeah. that. Cause I think that's going to help the days of throwing in frivolous activity when I would just go for a 12 mile run because I just wanted to listen to an album or like something like that. I was like, oh, I'm just going to go run 12 miles. I would just do that. Or, you know, throwing in, you know, oh, I'm going to golf on this day. Or, oh, hockey. I'm gonna now things got to be a little bit more planned. And I think it's, it's helpful for me when it's a little bit more planned. Because if you just keep throwing those ingredients in that pot at a certain time, like I said, yeah. it's going to start tasting funky. It's, and that's the human body. And that's what I have to think about differently. So it's understanding that, all right, if I squat, if I back squat this week, like, should I be doing heavy deadlifts three days later? Well, if I'm playing hockey, my low back's going to be pounded. So how am I, how are my hips and my back going to respond to that? You start thinking about things differently rather than 20 years ago. I was like, oh yeah, I can handle it. Like, it's, it's fine. Like your body just doesn't recover when you make stupid decisions the way that you used to recover. But, okay. but I'm finding I'm still able to put muscle on. I'm still able to get stronger. I'm still able to hit PRs. I'm still able to do- How? Tell us how. I'm still- by You're doing a lot of cross training too, which is good, right? Yeah, but I'm also focusing a lot on strength and power, which a lot of people don't like doing because they get afraid of those words. Right. I heard that power, my, my friends in Mind Pump, do you know the Mind Pump guys? I do know them, yeah. yeah. Um, that like you can use power lifting techniques to really increase your muscle mass 100%. for people, right? Yeah, I, I think um, neurologically it's going to help out. I also think that we need to be strong as we age. And it's like, it's funny because like a lot of these young kids who are getting into this stuff, like I'm watching them, it's kind of ironic. They're following 40 year olds. Like how did so-and-so train for the Olympia? And they're doing 12 reps and 15 reps. And I'm like, guys, stop with that. Like work on muscle endurance a little bit. You got to get strong. And strength is something that I think we start becoming afraid to focus on as we get older because we think we're going to get hurt. And we can if we're not. That's but true. But it's making a good decision. Like if you can't touch your toes, like am I going to have you conventional deadlift? Like the answer is probably no. Like right. probably no conventional deadlifts are going to happen. But I'm going to work on your hinge. I might get you into some sumo deadlifting with the kettlebell. I might then get you into a trap bar as we improve mobility and I'll get you stronger at those movements. The mistake becomes that like I'm watching this guy here, Jim Smith, who, who can't even touch his kneecaps is trying to get into a full deadlift position and his spine is flexed and he's loading dysfunction. So I think it's also people out there understanding what exercises should you be and should you not be doing? If you're so, if you can't externally rotate the arm past here, how the hell am I going to shoulder press? Standing, I'm gonna have to arch back and lean. Now I'm in my spine. 
Now I'm pressing from here. All the tension is going on my lower back. There's a cost of doing business. So it's understanding this stuff is how we can train hard and heavy as we age. And we could do this with some resiliency, most important word that I use. And um, either some consistency or intensity. Because if we're consistent, right. that's fantastic. But as we get consistent, we want to play with intensity. So you're saying that, from what I understand, in order to really build muscle, we got to play with the reps and and weight, right? So, but also understand rep, the movements and understanding the movements that one should be doing, right? So, like using common sense, right? Yeah. If you can't do, you know, if you can't, if you if you're not, if you can't do level five, if you can't even do level one, yeah. Right? But, but, so, but what I'm trying to say is, like, most people don't even. It's not common for them. Like, right. someone will be in a deadlift position, and they're like, "This is right," and I'm like, "No, it's wrong." Like, well, that's your spine. That, it's so not that common was what for them. I was going to say. Yeah. What do you do with people? Like, yeah, you're talking to me. I know what you're talking about, more or less, yeah. right? But a lot of people don't, and so they can get injured really easily. Easily. So right. then, how do you prevent that from happening? Well, I think on scale, like. I, and this is not this is not a promotion for like any product or anything, mm -hmm. but like I have challenges. There's a reason why I created my challenges. Like I sell programs online, but yeah. my challenges are where I'm Talk coaching. Because I would be no, thank you. Uh, yeah. but like I coach between 500 and 1,000 people a month on this Facebook group, and what they do is every day on on my morning video, they can attach videos of themselves doing exercises or they can ask me questions and I'm sitting there critiquing those videos. I'll spend an hour to two hours a day going through these videos, sending back notes. And in time, I start getting this entire community now, which is thousands of people to where they know how to train. So they get a video library, they get a workout plan, they get a nutrition guide, they get exercise videos to every single movement. And then if they have questions, they're like, Don, I, I just attached a video of an RDL and I'm looking at, listen, spine is too much, it's too flexed. This is what I need You're you to do. You're actually going through yeah, every, every video? Every, every, everyone. I'm Are obsessed you with, I'm obsessed with this group. I, I love them. It's fantastic. It's, so that's like, where I'm putting my time now. That's where I'm You're really, not training individuals no, anymore. No, I don't train individuals anymore. I get caught. Even I Ryan get, Reynolds? Well, Ryan, Ryan, I'll go say. Ryan, 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 I'll see. Blake, I'll say 100%. Um, but yeah, I, I'd like. You're for, focusing on these other businesses. I'm, focus, I'm focusing on, yeah. On, the, on other people. Like, and I also like the idea of getting in front of more people and helping more people. Like that to me is, that's, that's intriguing. Cause you're also like a really good. So you might, you should, no, you are. So you should be up spreading the wealth a little bit to the rest of the world. So you're saying though, building muscle as you age, it is important to do these, but if you're doing it properly, yes. doing these, get, have the focus be being, getting strong. Get strong. Right, not just. Take your time getting strong. Take your time getting yeah. strong. Yeah. And how about like nutrient wise? Like what yeah. are some important foods that, that aren't the common ones that everyone talks about that maybe we can learn from? I'm really into metabolic flexibility. And for yeah. those people who are un unaware of what that is, it's utilizing your carbs and your fats as your energy sources. And I believe that um, we've always looked at a low carb diet as success because that's probably the easiest way that someone is able to quantify their success. Like, yeah. oh, I got on the scale. Oh my God, I lost three pounds. It's from no carbs. This is what I need. And what they're not, what they're unaware of is for every gram of carbs you're consuming, you're pulling in two to three grams of water. So when you rid your body of carbohydrates, you're dehydrating your body of water. The problem with that is that think of it as a dry sponge. The moment you take that dry sponge and you throw it in some water, it absorbs all that water. Yeah. And that water for someone out there might be like, oh, I'm going up for, for a Mexican dinner. Or I'm going to Vegas. I'm going to have some cocktails. Then your body's like that dry sponge and it pulls back all, in all that water. And then they get on the scale the following Monday. They're like, oh my God, I lost 15 pounds and I gained eight of it back this weekend. This isn't worth it anymore. So what I like to do is I like to spend time getting people acclimated to utilizing carbs and fats as their energy sources. Mm -hmm. And protein is your muscle building block. It's one of the most important macronutrients. And we take our time getting them to a maintenance level of calories, not living in a deficit all the, all the time. Because it, it makes sense. Like our, our, the, the example, I, I said this example to Max earlier, it was, it was our bodies are like these really smart cars, right? And the calories you're having is like the gasoline. So imagine your car okay, turning around. I heard this. You said, you said this on someone else's podcast. No, but but I I I, I got to say it again. It's like your but like imagine a car saying like, oh my god, I only have a half a tank of gas in it. I can only drive to this point. Like if you just drive a car, it'll run out of gas. Your body says that. So your body now is recognizing a thousand calories right. in there, and then it's going to start slowing its way down. It needs to be repeated. It does because people don't get it. If you're consuming 1,200 calories a day, where are you and you're not losing weight, where are you going to go from there? 
you can't drop it to 900 calories or 100 percent. but people don't see that the right. problem is that but that's why they, they don't see, see a result and then, or they, it's, it's always catch up, right? Like they'll lose it for one day or two days and it comes right back when you eat again. Mm -hmm. But it's like, a, this, a lot of this is psychological. People, yes. a lot of it is. That's why when you asked me if it's 80, 20, I was going to say something and I, I just didn't want to throw it at No, you. no, tell I, me I, what. I want you to roll your eyes to me, but. I would never roll my eyes at you. It's, it's, it's not 80, 20, it's a hundred percent mental. There's no 80, 20 because we don't know, like my training partner tone never has eaten a healthy day in his life. I'll never look like him. I could get on if I, 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 my body will never look like his. He's got a 28 inch waist. I'm glad that you just said that. I think that's really important for people to know <laughs> that you cannot judge yourself based on someone else that you look right. at, at the gym or on social media, right. because it, so, so, but, but thank you. Basically you are saying genetics play a huge part they in it. They play a huge part in it, but it doesn't mean that you can't train hard and get to where you want to be get to. Right, but to stay there is much more, it's, it's much more of a struggle. For me, I have to work my ass off to get to a place where but like- But you look good. But I look, <laughs> you look right, good. If I, if I maintain that struggle, but I'm saying that someone else can look, it looks like this nat, like normally, not to say I look so great, but that's not what I mean, but like everyone's baseline is different. So the, the kind of work that you have to put in is different. Do you believe 100%. in this whole ectomorph, endo, like body types? Mesomorph. Mesomorph, endomorph, you know, it, it ectomorph. Got shun, it, it, it got shunned down like the last couple of years. So, like there is no body types, but like there kind of is, right? Yeah, like, there is. Like, I, let's I be very clear about that. Like I, I know like people started making fun of it. Like, oh, there's no, like, no, you get people that are big boned and you get that look more endomorph or you get someone like me that might be more of like a mesomorph. Or, You're a mesomorph. I'm a mesomorph. Right. And that's get, like athletic build. That's like in the middle. You're right. Like a, he might be more of like an ectomorph. Mezzo, it's you more know, of an ecto -mezzo, right? Yeah. So, like, yeah. So, we have different body types out there, and we have different frames. And there's only there's certain things we're gonna do with our body. Like, there's our bodies are gonna respond differently to different things, and it's just you can't. And you see it on bodybuilders, like even the the pros that are on like heavy drugs, yes, and are doing like it's all they they do. You'll hear it. some of them have lagging body parts; they just can't pull certain body parts out. Or genetically, this guy has been known for his legs, like Tom Platts, one of the oldest and most well known bodybuilders of all time. He was known his legs, the best legs in bodybuilding, right? I mean, what what that come down to? Was it all the squatting he did? Was it partially genetics? Like I'd probably say it was a little bit of both, yeah, right? Absolutely. But do we ever really know? I mean, we don't know. I, I'm just I'm one of these people that like, well, if you get me doing a preacher curl, and you get my buddy Frank Seppi doing a preacher curl, like our buys are going to respond differently. Totally to different. Right. Were you always though naturally athletic? I mean, did you, what was your baseline when you started? When I was in high school, I played four sports, so I was um. So you're super athletic. But I played college baseball, so yeah, that was my thing. Okay. What's wrong with that? No, but I'd say like, okay, again. I was a swimmer in high school. I played soccer in Where'd high school. Where'd you go to college? High. Went to Sacred Heart University in Connecticut. Okay. Played baseball there. I had a great experience. I had a great four years. Okay, so you obviously had like, you were very athletic. You had like a body type that yeah. was very like, you had a lot of coordination. I was always in good shape. You're always in good shape. Yeah. So this is not like a far cry from no. anything. I'm not going to tell you I'm one of these guys who went from like but you still, skinny to fat, back to skinny. No, I'm not. But you maintain, this is what I'm impressed by is that you maintained it. Like you, and it's I've not tried to better. improve it. I've tried to improve it. So like, how years. have you, how, okay, so let's talk about ways people can go. I think it's what I find the most difficult is losing five pounds or eight pounds. So like that last eight or five or like well, for tweaks. someone like you, cause there's not a lot to lose on you. Well, you know maybe, saying? maybe right. at uh, like three. I think the, th the th up to like seven or eight pounds is the hardest, right? What, how do people really dial in their stuff to do that? Are there supplements that you uh, No, I think nutritionally, I mean, nutrition, I, I think nutritionally you got to get really tight. So, so hard though. Right. Well, I think a lot of people do intuitive eating, right. And they're like, well, I eat healthy and I'm just kind of all over the place. You need to understand like what your body needs from a macronutrient standpoint to really dial in that last few percent. Like, unless you're a genetic freak, like my buddy right. who can just eat and look great and that's fine. But, um, what I will you do? Uh, give me, I need oh, to have like, I'll, I want I'll, substance. I will, stuff. I will, I will measure back. Like when I need to you get measure. cover ready, I am not doing that on intuitive eating. Like my last cover I shot, I was, 300 grams of carbs a day, 275 grams of protein, 90 grams of fat. Everything and was measured. Everything was measured. And that was still a deficit. I was consuming before, I had four weeks to get ready for a cover. The, the, the last three covers I got ready for, I had under five weeks. 
I just, I'm just, I could just get ready. Like I'm not, I'm always well, you re- stay ready. I stay ready all year long. It's a laugh or some oh, it's ego comment. No, I stay ready. I you just, stay ready, you know? I, I want to stay in a certain, I have a line to all my clients. I say, guys, we got to be two weeks out. 365 days a year. And like, what does that mean? I'm like, that means if you get a phone call and you got to be ready for a role or something last minute, I call two weeks, two to three weeks. Like we can make some adjustments and we're going to feel pretty good about ourselves. May not be your best, but we're going to feel pretty good about yourselves. I never want anyone falling off completely totally. unless it's like, like a, like a role, like what jo- jo- Joaquin Phoenix, I got ready for a role once where we had to like put on the size. And then like literally after this last day of shooting, I remember him coming into the gym and being like, I got to lose 60 pounds. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, 60. like this is crazy. Like it's just, sometimes it's not, I'm not saying it. Like, I hate when people come to me with that stuff. Like I've had a couple of people try and hire me. They're like, I have a, a charity thing that we're doing at the office and it's whoever loses the most weight. I'm like, I'm the worst guy to ask. Like I believe in long-term investments here. I don't like yeah. doing quick and quick and fast and dirty, whatever. Yeah, I don't like that shit. How do, but what are like, so like, how do you like, so you, you yep. measure. So how do you kind of like fine tune? Is yep. it, uh, you measure your macros. So this is what you're going to do because you want nuts and bolts here. I, I, like, I like, I like the details. Okay. So details. Like broad so there's, so there's two things that you're going to do. You're either going to download an app called chronometer, chronometer. Okay. okay. Or it's called chronometer. Is that like it, my fitness pal? It is. It's better. It's more accurate. Okay. okay. The, the data is more accurate and it does a whole macro and micronutrient per, breakdown on everything. It lets you know everything. And I just have to put my numbers in there and that's what I put do. Put your numbers in there. It's got a built in Mifflin calculator and depending on your goals, it's going to spit out to you your protein, carbs, and fats. I would put you on a 35% protein, 35% carb, and 30% fat approach. Now, you're going to look at those calories and one of two things are you're going to say. You're either going to be like, oh, shit, I am way underneath that number. And I'm not that even close. That won't happen. Or, or like, okay, like you're, you're not going to be over it. Like most people think that most people, 99% of the people come to me and they're under that number. And then we have to spend our time reverse dieting them. Meaning we have to slowly. So say this, say a woman comes to me and she's consuming 1200 calories a week. And she's like, I'm not losing any weight, but chronometer or a Mifflin calculator, which you can download for nothing. Um, tells you that you need to be around 2,200 calories. I'm not saying that 2,200 calories is the exact number, but it's in a range. I'll spend the next five weeks probably bumping you 200 calories a week. We're taking our time. So every week, 200 calories, 200 calories, 200 calories, bringing it up, assessing, monitoring. How do you feel? How are your clothes fitting you? How's your energy level? A few weeks in, oh, wow, I'm feeling really good. Oh, wow. Um, my clothes are, I gained a pound in the beginning, but now my clothes are fitting me loose. It's a process. We're getting the body adjusted and reacclimated to consuming the nutrition that your body needs. And once I get you to a maintenance calories, your total daily energy expenditure, it's your TDEE, then I can make assessment on what do we want to do. Body composition, Jen, Jen, you're like, my body composition is improving. My energy level's high. Don, I'm consuming 2,200 calories a day. I feel amazing. My sleep's amazing. What do I do now? I'm like, nothing. Keep your foot on the gas. And you're like, really? I'm like, keep your food quality high. Let's monitor what's going on with body fat. Let's take some before and after pictures. Let's see what's happening. You know, three weeks later, suddenly you're like, oh my God, look at my arm. Oh my God, look at my upper chest. Like things are changing, even though the scale's not changing. The quality of your body, your composition is changing. That is the right way to do it. The wrong way to do it is we have to immediately get into a deficit. Deficits work sometimes. They don't always work. And for some people who say bullshit, well, why is someone who's consuming 1200 calories who are already in a deficit, not losing any more weight. If a deficit always worked, why is that? It's because their metabolism is just starting to crap out on them. So I believe in building muscle, like Dr. Gabrielle. Building muscle does not mean walking around looking muscular. Like Blake Lively builds muscle. Annie Hathaway, I just got her ready, ready for the, the 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 show We Crashed. You know the, the whole We Yes, work. of course. I, I prepped her for that. Like that was right after having Jack, her her youngest. Did she have kid. Did she have muscles? She's so skinny in that. She oh my god, she had abs in that right after her baby. She looked amazing. What'd you do? What kind of what was the plan for that? Strength training, all we, strength training. We, no, and she had a yoga instructor twice a week. And what did she eat? She ate more plant strong. Try and get a little bit of animal protein. She's not big into it, but like very plant strong. Doesn't mean she's vegan. Doesn't mean she's vegetarian, but she, she's open about it. She spoke about it. But she eats chicken or? Yeah, some like minimally. Like we're trying but to get it, But more. it's about like, okay, I believe that if people are training well, mm-hmm. like with someone like you or like a program like yours, right. and they are keeping their nutri- like their nutrition or, or their food in check, 
they're going to be good to go. They're going to be good to a specific point. Now, good to go by whose standards? That's right. So that, right. that's what I'm saying. They'll be good to go. Now, now 99% of the, 99.9% of the women on the planet would look at you and be like, I want to look like that. So they would, they Why would not be like, 100%. Well, I'm just, cause there's always, <laughs> just cause there's always someone, right? <gasps> but my, you, you're, you're that someone you want to improve. So oh, you're, wait, uh, yes. so you're I'm always like my at, own worst critic. Right. Cause I know you, that I'm not at my peak right now. Cause I've been doing too much cardio, not enough weights. Okay. But that's yeah. a whole other story. Well, we can talk about that also off, yeah. offline. I mean, that's something that we can, you know, formulate a different type of plan. Are you going to do a program for me? I could. I was assuming that was part of the, you know, part of the uh, podcast, uh, I guess, extras. I got, I got her. Okay, I, 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 got I hope you. so. I got you. Okay, so wait, so then to fine tune, let's say, let's use Anne Hathaway, or you, Annie Hathaway. Annie Hathaway. Okay, how do you fine tune that? She's working out, she has like a meal service that she's, every calorie is being accounted for, or she's weighing her macros. She and actually that. was more intuitive, you gotta, you gotta look at personalities also. You gotta look at who, you know, who is, she's a mom of two. She's works like crazy. She's got a husband. She's got a busy life. She's yeah. traveling. Like, by the way, that's most people. Yeah. I would say like, this is the thing, right? The reality is most people have a life, right? They're not just, they're not able to focus on their nutrition and their workouts 24 hours a day, right? We all, I, I mean, I have two kids. I am running around like a crazy person. I work, I got a husband, I have this, I've got that. We all do that, mm -hmm. right? So what do people like that? Like her, she could be one of the people that we talk about. What do we do to fine tune? Well, I mean, at, if a, we certain are point, doing at a certain point, you gotta take the, you gotta take the guesswork out. It's not the, it's not the answer that you want. At a certain point, intuitive eating, there, there could still be holes in that. What is there, it? Okay, tell when me. When I what, say what, holes, there means there's volatility day by day. So if Monday you're waking up, let's give you an example, and your protein's at 160, and then Tuesday you're waking up and your protein's at 110, there's a lot of volatility. Well, tell, in me how, tell people how they can know how much protein they should be eating. Well, you pretty much you get the app, the this chronometer app, app, app okay. and you get just a basic food scale. Do they and not I, say the palm of your hand? Or? Well, the palm of your hand is even going to get you into that range, but it's not going to be precise. But I think what people can do is if you are eating a lot of the same foods, which that's another conversation. By the way, that's what I do. We're going we're gonna to get to that because I, I've got my opinion on that. And if you start weighing out a piece of salmon and you're like, okay, uh, this piece of salmon that's the size of my hand is five ounces. Then like after you wait a couple times, you're going to know, well, it's within that range. Right. And I think, you know, and that's, and I'd be that's starving, but that's, and that's, but, but that's in, in a way, like that's really targeted, intuitive eating. Like you're getting, it's not exact, but you're getting pretty close. But if you're someone who's been eating and it's not happening, we gotta, and you can't answer to me like, well, where's your protein? And you're like, well, I eat really good. That's not what I'm asking. Where's your protein? Where's your carbs? Where's your fats? If I don't know those answers, then how can I fine tune it? I can't fine tune it. It's physically right. impossible. I can't give advice. So you can only fine tune if you know what someone's doing daily. Like I know what I'm Unless doing Unless they're wrong. eating McDonald's or they're eating like shit or they're not getting enough nutrition and then I can fine tune it to an extent. But to really dial it in, to really get specific, I, I, need, to see, I need to see macros. Yeah. I also think that like, I like what I like. A lot of people do this and they go, they lean really into what they mm -hmm. like. Like I'm a huge fruit person. I love fruit. Okay. But I mean- and it's good. It's good for you, but sure. you, but if you can, I can eat like seven pounds of of grapes. Probably not. It's a lot. It's a lot of sugar. It's a lot. I mean, exactly. It's about like it's about portion control yeah. for who you are. Yeah, but it's also like looking at your body too, and you burn. I do. How you, do you know? You you burn. Be, I, I can tell by your body. I can tell by the way you talk, the way you move. Your your needs. This everyone's <laughs> using this like fancy term now. And now people are arguing on need, not uh, you know, exercise activity thermogenesis is not when you're walking. I'm like, oh, what the hell are you talking? I about? know people. It's, I love when people who's saying that the other day. Lane Norton. Now he's a very smart guy. Yeah, but Lane Norton's like, supposed to be here. I, I have to reschedule. No, no, that's time. fine. But I'm like, Lane, come on. Like I'm, I'm pacing in front of the World Cup. That's not like, well, that's pacing. That's not walking. I'm just like, everyone's trying. Like it's. I, I know everyone yeah, has enough. like. I I totally enough. understand what you're saying. Yeah, I totally know what enough. you're saying. Okay, wait. So. um Wait, so where were we, hold on a second. We're talking about fine tuning. So, okay, how about supplements? Do you take supplements? What I do. Are, okay, what are your supplements? So I take a, a pro or prebiotic. I think those are fantastic. I think depending on your gut health and you should, 
consult with, you know, a functional medicine doctor like Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. If you have good gut health, maybe prebiotics have worked really good for me. I have good gut health. Um, someone who's with a damaged gut, maybe you need pro and pre. Um, so I think those are fantastic. Um, I think a good multivitamin. Um, which really? I, you believe in multi? Yeah, I do. I take a good, I take a good one a day from Thorne. I just, I throw it in there as a little extra. If I need it or if I don't need it, I can afford it and I take it and right. it's fine. Uh, fish oil, I think it's huge. Vitamin D, those are probably my two favorite. What's, what's your vitamin D, 5,000, do you think? Um, it depends the, on the time of year. I'll actually bump it to 10,000. Really? Mm -hmm. So in the winter, you go to 10,000. Yeah. What do you, so uh, there's a big thing right now with I'll that. monitor my bloods, of course. Dr. G monitors my blood, so. Dr. G, she's amazing. Okay. Dr. Gabrielle, yes. Um, how about creatine for women? What is your thoughts on that? I'm good with it. I've just been a lot of research, what it's doing for brain function, what it's doing for performance. It's fantastic. Um, do you recommend it? Depends on your goals. God, you're being so, you're being so. Um, I know. Uh, it's the right answer though. It's the You're right not giving answer. me the one well, size I fits can't, all. Well, I can't turn around and say, well, every woman should go on creatine. Okay, if, if you want to get lean, hey, I'll tell you the goals. If you want to have, if you want to be lean, you want to burn, you want to burn fat, you want I don't think you need creatine for that. I would use creatine more for performance. Really? So yeah. what do you want? So what can women do? To burn fat. To burn fat without just doing like. And also like tons of cardio as you age is the, is like the answer. So the first thing I'm going to give is, and I think I'm giving you very concrete answers. By I, the way. I don't know. We'll see you on the playback. I okay. think I'm giving you very concrete <laughs> answers. I think, um, first thing, start strength training. Like you, you yep. need to work on hypertrophy. Right. And Not if, 20 reps of like right. five pounds. A little bit of advice to all the women out there is focus. If most of them focused on actually putting muscle on, like the words that freak them out, like they probably achieve the body that they want. I totally agree. So like, stop worrying about getting bigger. Like you're going to get bigger if you're drinking alcohol, you're going to get bigger if you're eating a crappy diet. But if your diet is in check and you're lifting to, to get strong, like you'll probably end up getting the body you want, especially as you, as we age and things start getting loose in certain areas, like we need that tight. So, um, we sure do need that tight. That's right. You hear that? Go ahead. Um, so I think strength training is probably the most, one of the most important on top of it. Yeah. Getting in the basics protein, I think not being afraid of carbohydrates, understanding that if you're going to at least start with carbs, start timing your carbs out at a certain time during the day, I would just go around, start around workout time to where your body's going to utilize that macronutrient. Do you believe in shakes? Do you believe in intermittent fasting? What's I'm good with thoughts? shakes. I'm good with shakes. Cause it's a supplement. It's a means of convenience. And, um, I think there's some good quality shakes out there now that what do you great. like you know i work with a company called thorn they're I'm, a great company they're a great company yeah I look, and i actually created i co-created uh for garden of life uh their sport line you did yeah I God, you do so many things i mean by the way i'm just saying i didn't realize that you are really like a true entrepreneur you have Thank so you. many businesses that you're involved in it's fun it's amazing. It's fun. It was a good learning experience for me. I worked under this guy, Jeff Brahms, who was the VP of GOL. And he taught me about organic farming. And he, I mean, going over to, to Ireland and doing a deal with 4,800 farmers and establishing this co-op and how they're not allowed to say amazing. organic. Just all these great things it really educated me on the supplement company uh, industry. Um, but yeah, I, I use Thorn. So I'm, I'm doing it. And I, I work with them. The w one thing I'd love them to see them do is, is a grass-fed way. They don't have a grass-fed way yet. They don't? That would be good. Yeah, I, I'd like to see. So then, okay, you said something earlier and you kind of breezed by it. Yep. And, I, and I want people to know what it <laughs> okay. is, which is reverse dieting. Can yes. you describe what that is? Reverse dieting was a term that bodybuilders used to use when they were going into contest form. They would have to really deplete their body of water right and they would really start dropping carbohydrates the um weeks pro uh, you know before the event and then right before the contest they'd start pulling some water back in to give them this full tight feeling the problem after those shows is most people who are magazine cover ready or who are doing it the way i'm describing they don't maintain that all year long because they're so shredded mm -hmm. and you can't maintain that. Um, they actually, they actually end up looking <clears throat> overweight sometimes because um, our mass, they're just like mass and then they have a layer of fat over Yeah, them. yeah. So what ends up happening is if they don't, if they don't start reintroducing calories back in properly, they can blow up. So I saw a buddy of mine um, who actually just passed. Um, I saw him gain 36 pounds in two days. 
from a uh, post bodybuilding show. He won an MPC show out in Jersey and he basically went and he moved into like a cheesecake factory for the next two days and he, he legitimately put 36 pounds back on. And that was the example. How? Because it was, again, that dry sponge, his body was so depleted in carbs that he pulled back in all that water. Now, what should in have been- two done, days? Two days. What should have been done, what should have been done was a slow process of re-implementing slow burning carbs. I think after a show is very critical, though a lot of people want to crap out. You really shouldn't. It's really tough on the body. Yeah. You need to slowly start implementing in wow. carbs and fats back in your diet slowly. If you don't do it slowly, those guys will blow up or those women will blow up. So reverse dieting is a term that we use now for people who are in a deficit all the time and they can't lose weight or change body composition. And, you know, for any woman out there or any guy who's like, I'm already in a deficit and I'm craving food at night and I'm just, my energy's low and my workouts suck and my sleep's starting to get affected. Like you're probably in too low of a cal of a caloric state. Yeah. So now to get us to those maintenance calories that you need to be in, we need to take our time. Because if you need to increase your calories, I'm going to make this number up. It's very common. I see a lot of women who have to increase it by a thousand. And I'm like, they're at 1,200 calories. You need to get the 20. But won't they gain weight? And that psychological piece will be. They could if they do it too quickly. But if you do it slowly and you allow your body to adjust and adapt, the, the weight gain can be minimal to nothing. I've actually seen people lose weight. I've seen people lose weight from increasing calories. Really? Because yeah, I, I know. Could bring, I could bring a dozen nutritionists on right now for you to interview and they will say the same thing. I've seen it happen. So what's happened with me before, yeah. I'm using myself as an example only, but um, you know, when I try to do only weight training, cause that's what I was told many times by people who are much better than much smarter than I am in this, uh, only weight train, don't do cardio, only do heavy weight, da, 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 change your body. And I took out the cardio and they, they incorporated more sweet potato, more carbohydrates. The scale was getting higher and higher and higher. And psychologically I was freaking out like most people do. And then you go right, you revert right back. Like you're like, forget that. I'm going back to my old ways. You're, I, I've, I put, um, during, what was it? Hockey season last year, two years ago, I went for a DEXA scan before hockey. Yeah. And then I was playing like five days a week. Yeah. And I'm, I put on body fat. I you should, did? Yeah, I put on like a pound of body fat. And it's DEXA. Like it could, may not be 100%. Accurate, but, but like. Because you're doing so much cardio. But like, the, but the, but the trend was moving in that way of, of like me losing muscle and me putting on fat. Right. So that was, so did my diet change? Like I probably should have increased the calories more. I probably wasn't getting enough calories in. I was still weight training. I was still eating clean. I wasn't drinking alcohol. I was doing all these things that were good, but because I was in that deficit, my body yeah. couldn't maintain that muscle. See, there's so many, like, it, it, it becomes like an exact science in a way. It's not, it's unfortunate because, and you're right, like you want an exact answer, but that's why we're in the situation we're in, <laughs> where know. everyone's putting out programs, I know. everyone's putting out content and books. And they want, everyone wants a magic pill, like just do this. Like, what's your, what's your take on Ozempic? Do you know what that is? No. You don't know what Ozempic no, is? No, I don't. I don't or Wargovi? No, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's a diabetic uh, medication that's a shot that has become like oh, wait, a I, I read Hollywood about this with, craze. All, with all the crazy side effects. Like, like isn't there like liver cancer? And, no, and, no. And I don't know if it's liver cancer. Pancreatic cancer. There's some crazy stuff with it or um, no? I think Don't quote me on that. I don't want to get no, sued. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think, no, no. There's a lot of side effects. Like there's could be like, so what it is basically is that all these people in like Hollywood or people who are in a higher socioeconomic bracket because right. it's expensive, take this shot. It's called Ozempic or Wagovi, depending on um, the brand, but it's the same medication. It's just whatever. Um, and it's being used as weight loss. Mm. So people take a shot once a week and it's like the results have been extraordinary. However, the side effects are pretty bad and pretty extreme just in terms of just like daily, like in terms of you could be super constipated or diabetes or you have not you're nauseous the whole time you're nauseous for 24 hours no, straight and people are doing it like it's become like a it's become like a, like a craze you haven't heard about this no i i have heard about oh, it i just haven't heard i didn't know that was the name and i thought that was if it's the same one that we're talking about i thought they were much bigger um no there's probably lots of other like yeah. it's like it could be like may you know, maybe cancerous may cause a tumor here yeah, or there. I, I don't, I, don't re I just don't remember where it was. Like, was it liver? Was it this? Was it that? I don't remember where, 
But what I'm saying is there are a ton of side effects. People who are not diabetic, who should not be on the medication are now taking it by the drove. Like I'm talking like literally like every second person that you meet here. I know zero. Doing it. I know zero to nothing about things like performance enhancing substances or even drugs that you're talking about because it's just it doesn't need to be my wheelhouse. I just don't. It shouldn't don't, be your wheelhouse. No, but it, it, it's it's not something. I'm not the expert on it. I'll never be the expert on it. It's not. I'm not the person to talk. Like they need to go to a, a functional medicine doctor or someone who understands. Like yeah. a, like like a Dr. Gabrielle. Now, my problem with all that, the people in this industry who become great at this. When I say great at it, I don't mean as a coach. I mean like finding health and wellness. Mm-hmm. They start falling in love with a process. They start falling in love with a feeling. Training for you. It's a, it's about a result, but it's really more about the second you do that last set or that last second you get off and you're running up to have your, yeah, it didn't sound good. <laughs> Very, literally, right? Um, you're getting off the modality, call it what you want. And you're going to either the shower or to make some food. See this? She's all jokes. Um, that was actually really funny. So that's hilarious. You keep it in. Why not? Right? That was so funny the way you said it. Okay. No, when you're when you're when, when you're getting, getting like, off when from get doing off, when you're right? getting off from, from doing, doing what you're what you're doing whatever exactly that is. <laughs> exactly like that's why you come back though. But that's why you end up. By the way, this reminds me of like I would watch Family Guy. Oh I'm, my I'm god, a, that show! I can't okay, even. I but I'm it. such a I'm such a like I'm so immature. Like I'd watch it and he and like you know he'd be like you know. You said, what was it? Like you said, what's that stupid thing? Like, um, do you ever watch it when it's like the, 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 the man, like you said, do, do whatever. Like, what was that? Like it's that stupid. <laughs> Neither one of you is helping me out here. You have no idea what I'm talking about. No, I was thinking of Beavis and Butthead. I was watching something on Beavis and Butthead the other day. Like it popped up and they said something and I just started laughing. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying like, immature. Like, like immature, silly little. Beavis's father was in the Navy. He was a seaman. Uh, see, just I laughing. Laughing at that. <laughs> like, I just, I just started dying for some reason. I was like, this is hysterical. I would laugh too. Yeah, no, we know That's, she finds it funny. I find it hilarious. <laughs> That's my point. Like, like that is my it. point. Or is it Simpsons? Like you say, do, do. I don't know. Whatever. The point I is it. I laugh at dumb stuff all the time. Continue. I'm sorry. Continue I didn't mean, with what? I didn't with mean, the getting off portion or with the, or with the, I still don't know where we were at. I'm completely lost. When now. I got off my modality. When you got off, your, you when you got off the machine. What machine? Uh, yes. Yeah. Wait, I know what you're trying to say. I do it for the reason of like the feeling, feeling yeah. afterwards. Like that, but my point early when I was saying that even when I'm the most tired, I have this thing. I always say like, do it even when you don't want to. Mm. It's because like, even if I'm, I'm like sick of it already. I'm sick of working out. I'm tired of it more because I'm bored most of the time. Mm. Cause I'm doing a lot of the same things over and over again for so many years, but I still force myself because it's part of my daily ritual. Right. And I know the feeling I'm, I'm doing it to chase the feeling. I know I'm going to feel right. afterwards. Right. And it does clear my head and make me, it's the cognitive benefit of right. it all, right? Uh-huh. So I'm not, so yes. So this that's my point. This becomes part of your survival. Now, yes, a lot of- part pe- of my survival. Now, a lot of people out there, they, they want to have that feeling and they don't because they think they got to jump in and do what you're doing. Yeah. You know? my, my thing is like, all right, well, if you get bored at 20 minutes and do 15 minute workouts, like it's just, there's benefit to that. And there's benefit to someone getting in there and breaking a sweat and building some confidence. And then guess what? Friends start running into them. Oh my God, you look different. You yes. look better. Oh, I'm feeling better. And then you start relating it with that becomes success. I call them NSVs, non-scale victories. Yeah. And I love, like I promote non-scale victories. Like what are the things that we can do that get you more attracted to this process, to this feeling? And as soon as we get that, then we own it. It's like, as soon as you get that feeling, you're like, oh wow, I, I really feel good doing this. Then this becomes easy. But when this totally. feels like a job and you're like, this sucks, this is boring then as a coach, I got to do a better job in writing a program. Like yeah. it's, I got to create something else. Well, that's the thing. And also like, people just get stuck in ruts, right? Mm-hmm. And plateaus. What do you do when you plateau? Do you plateau then or? Oh, sure. Okay, there, so- there, there, there are times I plateau. Um, what do I normally like to do? Um, it might be at the time. I normally plateau when I've been doing a program for a while. Maybe that's the sign that it's time to get on a new program. Right. So I'll have a friend create something or I'll create something that I'm really excited about. Or it'll be a new focus. I'll start that the following Monday. I might take a day or two off. I might go out and I might have some fun food or, you know, just re- relax. Mix it up. Yeah, mix it up a little bit. Just let, let my hair down, clear my head a little bit. And and um, that's important. Even the holiday week, like we're coming up on the holidays right now. 
like I would, I'm going away snowboarding with the kids. Like I can lift, like I might force myself to take off because it'd be, it would be really good for my body. Yeah. It'd be really good for me that following money to come back, start my new program, have my nutrition, all my food set up, daily dose of deliver my food. Like then I dive into it Monday and I'm sharp and I feel good. Nice plug. It's nice, right? Yeah. You're very, getting the food. It's yeah. Like massage I know. It in there. Very good. Very it was good. kind of integrated. Thank really, you. it was so Doesn't smooth. Doesn't like the sound salesy. No, no, super smooth. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. I saw that. Notice it. Uh, so basically for regular people, not you, who's uh, on sure. covers of magazines when they plateau, the best way to kind of, it, it's just Go get hammered, <laughs> go eat some In-N-Out burger, you know, whatever, have a, have, a, have a bender, just, but honestly, like, but, oh, but it's I'm that saying, simple. It's that simple I know, sometimes. I'm actually telling, I'm actually yeah. not even being funny. I'm like, go sometimes the best thing to do is take a week off and just say, screw it and do whatever. I want you to take, take the weekend. If you're one of these people that are really meticulous about all this stuff, yeah. like turn around the weekend, like go out and eat, go out and go out and party one night, like go have a good time. Like, put your head down. Because put sometimes you plateau because you're doing the same thing over and over and yeah, over again. Like you're eating, time, yeah. you're eating the same thing. You're going to say something about me eating the same thing over and over again. Yeah. What are I, you think we, say? I think, you know, our bodies can develop food sensitivities. That's what's and, happened to me. I'm right. now allergic to eggs. Right. That's, I was the first thing I was about to say. Most people are like, you'll see that with a lot of bodybuilders because they eat so many eggs that you build a food. So food, food sensitivities and food intolerances are two to, totally yeah. different things. So sensitivities we can develop. Right. So you can develop a sensitivity. I think anything with a protein in it. I think they said if it has can a protein. Can you really? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So like any type of, yeah. So eggs would make total sense. So yeah, give yourself a break from eggs for a month or two, if you can. No, I've been doing it for a few months. So so you could Have actually, you tried re-implementing them now? Yes. How, did it work? But I, by the way, I didn't even know I was even You're allergic to them. You're not the question. Uh, no, it did, it did work. It did work. I mean, I don't know if it worked or not because my point was, I didn't know I was sensitive to them. I didn't know I was allergic to them. I went to get my blood tested or I, like all those- Were those, you having any reaction to it? No. I mean- I just went to get my blood tested to see what my whole, all my baselines were. Do you feel any difference from being off of them? No. So I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even. That's I wouldn't what even, I'm saying. Do I listen to this guy? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. The only way, like if I'm waking up every day and having eggs and then like five minutes later, I'm like, <clears throat> and I'm like clearing my throat. I wasn't like, doing then that. Then there's an issue. But like, if you feel great and then you get off of it, like, I don't really, what type of test is he giving you? Like, I don't know. Is it blood? Is it an Alcat test? Like, I don't know. A blood test. But my point is this could happen if, because a lot of people say that you should be mixing up the foods you're eating also you so your body doesn't get acclimated to that as well. well. So important. if you eat too clean too often or all the time. I think if you eat a lot of the same stuff all the time. And I do find if I eat really super clean all the time, like my body starts going flat. Yeah. You ever hear that term? You like you lose that muscle fullness. You lose that like yeah. muscle pump that a lot of us get when we train. So yeah, that's normally the time where I'd like a boost day or a... Um, a refeed day or some people. What does that mean? A boost well, day? Well, a boost and a refeed day are just a really fancy way of saying like it's a clean cheat. So if you were to just like skyrocket your carbohydrates, but not really eat anything crappy, eat a ton of fruit, eat like bowls of oatmeal or a lot of jasmine rice, a, a way That's to fine. get your, I, I'll do that get anyway. your carbs up, 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 like way higher than they normally are. We call that a boot, a, a boost. A cheat is like cheats. Like when you just go off and you eat. Do you believe in cheat days? Then I do. I do. I think it's important. So what I believe, if this is more of a dynamic conversation, like to hear this. is that some people, depending on the person, this is more of an answer I thought you were going to say, it depends on the person. Someone like me who is an extremist, um, if I cheat one day, then I'm off the, I'm off the you know, rails for that, that day is going to be a week. Some people, depending on the person's personality, mm -hmm. right? Maybe have a cheat meal, not yeah. just a cheat day or like- yeah. That, right, I, that I, I, I'm more, I don't, if you need a cheat often. day, if you need a cheat day, take a cheat day. And what, I mean, when would I ever say it's okay? If someone's like been dieting really well, I can't call I it dieting. Like if all these things are falling into place and they just feel like they're like, oh, I'm going away or I'm doing this. I'm like, yeah, go have a good time. But if you're going to wake up from that, you're going to feel like crap every Monday from doing a cheat day, then you're overdoing it. 100%. I don't, I don't, I am not worried about one day of eating. I'm not worried of one night of eating. We're not going to put on body fat from that. I'm more worried about, it's like with alcohol. I'm more worried about what that's doing to your sleep quality. Do, do you drink? Once in a while. Yeah. I don't drink. I think that's like a real killer. Like in it's terms of, you. yeah. I like a good beer. So like when my wife and I go snowboarding with the kids, like we'll sit around the fire and we'll have like an IPA or something like that. That's cool. Like yeah. that I'm fine but with But that's that. like, again, you're doing it like very sporadically. Yeah, it's no. like, okay, um, I got to wrap this up actually because I have to go. But 
Can we do this again? Because sure. it's like right at the 3.30 mark. Uh, can you tell us and tell people how to find you and where to find you and if they want more information on fitness wow, superheroes? Nice here. I'll take it. Thank yes, you very much. You, should, you could take it. Don Saladino. Just go to my Instagram or donsaladino.com. If you have any questions, shoot me a DM. I'll get back to you eventually. He, so. he also has uh, a food Sub, uh, a food yeah. delivery called Daily Dose. Daily Dose. Yeah, I got a meal plan up there. If you guys get any questions, fire it off to me. Okay. Yeah, he is a wealth of knowledge and um, very and, and also just very nice and very. Sweet. I had fun connecting with you. I felt like we could have sat here for hours. I could actually, I can keep on going, but I just looked at your watch and it says the time. Okay. You got somewhere you got to be. So I have a, I have a, yeah, I have so a let's, podcast. Let's do it again some other time. Okay, we're gonna do this again. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching Habits and Hustle. Please watch another video here and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by pressing the button below. Hosted by Jennifer Cohen, visionaries tune in, you can get to know them. Be inspired, this is your moment. Excuses, we ain't having that. The Habits and Hustle podcast, powered by Habit